Let's talk about Sharon Moore, who was announced last Friday as the new head coach at the University of Michigan. And this is a tremendously big deal. It's a tremendously big deal because it is the first time that the University of Michigan has employed a black man to lead its program, the win in its program in all of college football and the defending national champions. But I think what's really interesting about this is that everybody believed that Sharon Moore was the guy to follow Jim Harbaugh when he decided that he wanted to return to the NFL to coach the Los Angeles Chargers. That's the part of this that I think is jaw-dropping, okay? It's not just that Sharon Moore's the guy. It's that there wasn't anybody in the room that didn't think he should be the guy. At 37 years old, this is his first head coaching opportunity and not a bad meteoric rise for him. Now, Sharon from Derby, Kansas, played at Butler Community College, ended up transferring to the University of Oklahoma where he played some offensive line, then goes into coaching, right? Stop at Louisville, working for Charlie Strong, stop Central Michigan, worked for Dan Enos. Dan Enos is getting ready to be the wide receiver coach at Michigan, and he goes to Jim Harbaugh and said, hey, I got this guy that I think you really need to hire. His name is Sharon Moore. And Jim Harbaugh, cool, I need a tight ends coach. Employs Sharon Moore to be his tight ends coach in 2018. And slowly but surely, this bromance started to really bear fruit. Those two guys, Sharon Moore and Jim Harbaugh, think about each other like brothers. And I would even say that that part of the discussion needs to be a little bit louder. Because if Jim Harbaugh did not want to help raise Sharon Moore up, we wouldn't be talking about Sharon Moore as the head coach at the University of Michigan. The point that I'm raising here is you got to want to raise up a guy like Sharon Moore, right? And not for nothing, but Jim Harbaugh followed a black offensive coordinator in Josh Gaddis who won a Broyles Award, took it to the college football playoff, and helped them win a Big Ten championship And in addition to beating Ohio State. And follow that by elevating another black man to be his offensive coordinator and offensive line coach in Sharon Moore. And then Sharon continued to do what he has done, which has produced one of the best offensive lines in the entire sport. 2021, 2022, you know what it is. He won the Joe Moore Award with those offensive lines. In 23, he's got seven guys that could get drafted in April into the NFL draft. That is what he's been able to do for a program that has prided itself on its offensive line play and its ability to be physical at the point of attack with guys like Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards behind. But more than that, Jim Harbaugh was forced to sit out six games of a 15-0 season. And four of those games, he chose to make Sharon Moore the acting interim head coach for the program. And they are not small games. Okay, Penn State on the road, first time. He was emotional after that win, Sharon Moore, a cussing on national television. But you know what? We forgive it because we understand. Comes back, beats Ohio State at Ann Arbor as the acting head coach, right? Also has the good sense to not just get that win against Maryland, but also say, hey, it doesn't mean what it means until we get Jim Harbaugh back in this photo to really get this over that this is his program. And all the way through the college football playoff, we're looking at Sharon Moore, who is in his bag calling plays. Like, for an offensive line coach to be th calling some of the, let's call it gadget plays that Sharon Moore would pull out, I got to tip my cap on that one, man, because I didn't think he was going to have that in the bag, even when I'm like, hey, time, this ain't the time to get cute. Hand the ball to Corum and do what it do. But it worked out, right? They go 15-0, and 0, and at a point that could have really changed the trajectory of the Michigan program if, Ward Manuel and Santa Ono had decided to go a different way. They chose to employ this man to be their guy. I'm going to talk about this in a way that I think you find familiar if you've been following me or you have watched this show for any length of time. But to look at me, yes, I am a black man, right? I also have written two books that are about black experience. One about me becoming an NRA pistol instructor. Another about 100 years after the Tulsa Race Massacre. These are extremely important topics for me and my birthright. My grandmother, Peggy Jean Connors, sued the state of Mississippi for voting rights reapportionment in 1968. Okay, uh, I'm descended from civil rights royalty. So when I look at the landscape of college football and I see that 56% of players are black and I see that there have just been 40 black head coaches since 1981, I'm going to choose to point out that Sharon Moore being the first man to be black and be head coach at Michigan 
is not unlike any other pioneer that you know about. Jackie Robinson, Barack Obama, the list goes on. It matters. It matters because pioneers are pioneers for a reason. And I understand that many of you don't want to talk about this being a big deal, but we have to. Because race is a part of life, especially in this country, which is born out of slavery and fought its way through the Civil War and has slowly but surely continued to make progress toward how we view black Americans. And at this time, when 13% of the country is black and 7% are black and male, to look at 56% of the labor force of college football and not see that many black head coaches, you're going to really have to point at it. But I'm also going to point this out. With Michigan doing this, they also have their first black head coach before, say, Alabama. LSU, Ohio State, and we got to take it back to Wichita State with Willie Jeffries when he became the first Division One A head coach to be black. And then we got to take it back to Denny Green at Northwestern, 1981, right? The first year that I can remember it being significant that a black man was head coach, Ty Willingham, Notre Dame. That will always be such a big deal to me and to my family in particular because we never really thought of Notre Dame as being on the program. And then not only did Ty Willingham show up, but we were going, hey, dog, you can't you can't fail at this. This this is the big one. We, we can't have you. What do you do? He won 10 games. You know, people forget that part. And Sharon Moore is in a position to do just that. Forno as an interim, but now the interim tag is gone. 2024 belongs to him and he's up against it. I don't think people realize how difficult this job is about to get for him because while he was raised to do the job by Jim Harbaugh. Remember, Jim Harbaugh took this job in 2015 and didn't get it going in the right direction for six years, right? And that was a man who had had tremendous success at Stanford, tremendous success with San Francisco 49ers, okay? It is also doing it without many of the pieces that Sharon Moore came comfortable with when we're talking about what it means to be a head coach. Like, Jesse Minter's probably headed to the Chargers, right? Ben Herbert is headed to the Chargers. You're going to have to raise up new strength and conditioning coordinator. You have to rely on another defensive coordinator as your play caller while you have to navigate being the head coach and whether or not you're going to have a heavy hand in an offensive line, whether or not you're going to have a heavy hand in play calling, right? But with Jim Harbaugh, you got to see he could navigate all of that. Not unlike Nick Saban, he could turn over the offensive coordinator. He could turn over the defensive coordinator. He could keep what was working for him and stay in his strength of being the one-of-a-kind man that he is. And Sharon's going to have to do that. He's going to have to really rely on his family and really rely on that program to help carry him at these times when he's still learning the job. And I'm saying that as the guy who is looking at him going, hey, he loves it at Michigan. And he even said, as a graduate of the University of Oklahoma, he hopes that by the time his time is done at Michigan, they think of him as a Michigan man, right? I get all of that. I understand, right? I also understand that you want to talk about football. But it is difficult to talk about football without recognizing just how big football is in our lives. The NFL is what we are built around. College football feeds into the NFL. We talk about what it means to have black folks at these positions of influence and power. So much so that the NFL has its own rule saying you got to interview a minority head coach candidate anytime you got an opening, because that's how hard it's been for black men and men of color to break in at these management positions and why we continue to say, hey, this is a tremendously big deal. But the last thing I want to point out here is that Jim Harbaugh has quietly done this twice at two major Power Five programs. You'll remember that when he left Stanford, he left it in the hands of David Shaw, who, by the way, was pretty damn good as head coach at Stanford Cardinal, right? Director of football, excuse me, right? And now he's done it again with a man that's a year older than me, who's got the same background as I do, who grew up two and a half hours away from where I grew up, who went to undergrad where I went to graduate school. And he's decided, no, no, Sharon Moore is not only worth it, he is one of the best men that I've ever been around, one of the best coaches that I've ever been around, and I'm proud to have him be my interim and have him follow and succeed me at the program where I play college football, where I brought the program to its first national championship in 26 years, at a program that hadn't had a black man lead it until Sharon Moore was named to that job last Friday. Also, quiet as it is kept, University of Michigan, got a black athletic director 
and a black head coach. All right. Find those right up top of my head. I'm looking at Maryland. About it. Right. I think these things are going to show themselves to be really beneficial to the University of Michigan when we talk about what they're looking for and how they're going to recruit. Because this stuff matters. It matters to me. It matters inside these communities. And if you are going to be about diversity and inclusion, this is what you're going to have to do. This is what it looks like. It means picking someone that doesn't look like you, man, woman, blue, black, red, green, or orange, and deciding, no, 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 I'm going to help you. As long as you want to learn, I will teach you. And as I am mentoring you, and as you are learning, you will become a reflection of me and my values. And I got to tell you, man, I have never been more proud of Jim Harbaugh than I was when I saw him throw his entire weight behind this man who had done little to nothing until he got to Michigan as a, as a uh, tight end coach. And he has quietly, surely become one of the better football coaches that we got in the sport. That's tremendous. That's tremendous. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.